I uh, just want to ask about a particular practice that uh, I've heard about from a couple of contractors. Okay. Uh, in my particular field, um, contractors have told me that uh, the State Department of Transportation has told them who to uh, hire, what firm to hire to do the work. And I've had two contractors tell me that, actually. Um, so I, I, I'm just, well, I, you know, and I, and I wanted to kind of get that reaction, or that sort of reaction from you. I mean, it does sound um, extremely inappropriate. Um, but I was told that by, like I said, two individual contracting firms. Uh, and one of them actually told me who told them to do that. So, um, I, so I say all that to say um, there are folks talking about how this process mm -hmm. sometimes works. Yeah. And um, I guess I'm feeling a little aggrieved by that. I'm feeling, you know, kind of, uh, I mean, I've just been cut out of uh, the whole system because... Um, at least according to these contractors, they are being told by uh, the state who to hire. And we can talk about it more later. Okay. Uh, actually, Chris it's has great to talk to you about it as well. Yeah. Um, but extremely inappropriate. Yeah. Um, and like I said, told by, and then and then one time, this is uh, a few years ago. Um, well, I won't go any further. Okay. But. Um, I don't know if that sort of thing happens uh, in terms of uh, folks that do other folks in this room that do other things, you know, electrical, mechanical, you know, whatever. Yeah. But not a not a good not a good practice. Mm. No, no, that that's and again one yeah. one that um, there ought to be some conversation about, and it can be private conversation, but yeah. um, ought to be some conversation about because. Um, you know, the, the, I'm, I'm an adjunct. The stuff I do is an adjunct to any project, you know, public yeah. affairs and government mm -hmm. affairs and that sort of thing, and, you know, a very, very small percentage. But if that sort of thing is happening with folks that do other things, that have 10, 15, 20% of, you know, a project, that people that hold dirt or excavate or whatever, yeah. um, that, is, that is not good. Um, and... Uh, like I said, I, I'd, I'd like to have a conversation about that at some point. Yes, most certainly. I, I um, that's not okay, Chris. So, um, <sighs> yours is not the first story we've heard like that, and a lot of times it involves both the certifications, the certification process, what Washdot is saying, what a prime contractor is saying. So, um, kind of to make a long story short, if you, if if a prime contractor is telling you this. You should call WashDOT immediately and, and, and confirm that information. What we get a lot of time is is a translation. You know the old game of you tell somebody and somebody oh, else. Oh yeah, tells somebody. yeah, yeah. No, that's, <laughs> that's true. That's, that's true. true. Yeah. So so what we've uh, always suggested is don't don't go ask somebody else who's done who's not the the source. Go right to the source and ask the source yeah. if that happens. Yeah. Uh, there, there could be just a tinge of truth in what somebody has told you, like there's a certified list that, that they have to work by or something like that. So there could be a partial truth in there. So what we've done in, in our agencies between WashDOT and ourselves is when a contractor reports something that, that uh, like for instance a NAICS code or a work code that, that has to be issued, is they, they've often uh, come and said, well, WashDOT said this, you said this, and Federal Highway said this. Well, we actually have a meeting uh, uh, every three weeks about just on NAICS codes and who's requesting NAICS codes. And Federal Highway sits at our meetings, so we don't do anything in the blind. All three of us get together and we discuss these cases and we make a decision and we document those decisions. So, so what I'm asking each of you in the office here in, in this meeting today is if you hear a rumor or an innuendo about what an agency, especially a government agency, is, do, is doing, don't sit there and, and take that as the truth and be frustrated. Call the agency. Mick is our primary contact for any complaints that come, comes into our agency. He directly answers. If he cannot answer that, that complaint, then it goes right to the, the, the analyst who is actually working on the case or to an investigator 
or we get WashDOT involved, or in uh, in some cases we get Federal Highway directly involved, and it's as quick as like 10 or 15 minutes because we get on the phone right away. The Federal Highway Administration is one building over from us, and we have morning meetings with Federal Highway uh, just just to share uh, share war stories to. to be quite frank, uh, about what's going on in the industry, and we always involve WASHDOT. So we're very close together as far as communication is concerned. So please, 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 if you have questions, call us. Don't, don't let a rumor stir around. Um, I'll give you my direct number. It's area code 360. Take this down. 664-2000. And I'm the only one who picks up that phone. So you get to talk to me directly. I'm yeah. sorry, and your name again? My name is Chris Liu, L-I-U. Yeah, and also you can uh, just email me directly because I want a paper trail, okay? And, <laughs> and the reason why is because I'm, the, the no. time, there's an accountability <laughs> issue that, 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 I, that I want. Because uh, I want to be able to trace it. Because a lot of times people make these statements and then they, when I ask that question, they back off. Yeah. So there's a lot of this anonymous stuff going on, and we have to investigate those too. So it's, it's very, very time consuming and resource driven for our agency to, to do these things. So I want to know exactly where the source is, because it, it needs to stop. You know. So my email is Mick M, it's M I C K M, at omwbe.wa.gov. So we have zero tolerance for this kind of stuff. So. And I can tell you that uh, Mick spends probably 70% of his time running down complaints. People who call in on a daily basis. Normally we get it done within that same day. Yeah. I have uh, some uh, help from you, uh, your office. The, uh, I have the franchise, the uh, state uh, e-cycle program, okay? And uh, there was a, a deal for the... Uh, Problem, you know how you fund it, right? Mm -hmm. you, uh, so I, 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 I have to go uh, uh, the way for the uh, in detail. The, we have uh, six recyclers statewide, and uh, the uh, two guys have a seventy-five percent of the volume of the recyclers. Okay, and uh, four guys, very small, including me. And uh, those uh, out of four, three guys of the Asians, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, I have been, what do you call, writing letters to uh, uh, city mayors and uh, what do you call, the uh, Snohomish County Executive Office and uh, uh, the Snohomish County Economic Council, a very powerful group in Everett because of oil and stuff. So they wrote the letter on behalf of uh, small guys, right? And the state the agency, uh, the ecology department, they oversee uh, the uh, Washington, what they call it, financial uh, uh, the DFI. DFI, right? And uh, the uh, they're not very responsive. And I met the fellow who sponsored original e-cycle e program. His name is Brian Sullivan. Uh, he was a prime what they call the uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the who sponsored the bill. And uh, he told me that the, uh, he was the right of behalf for me. When he wrote to the bill in uh, the Olympia, uh, the bill is designed for small guys, small business people for the jobs, right? And uh, uh, how we can, what do you call, uh, have some, uh, at the, what do you call, the uh, equity, you know, for the, uh, the uh, uh, distribution of the, what do you call, the e-cycle uh, volumes, you know, among other Four persons. Right? Two guys have one guy have a uh, fifty-four percent. Mm -hmm. The other guys have a seventeen percent, right? So twenty-five percent is uh, distributed among the uh, four small recycle, right? If, uh, to me, is I have other businesses, so I guess okay. But those the other guys are very tough to survive. You know what I mean? So if you can uh, uh, look into uh, the interest of small business people, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you know I'd like to talk to you later day. Sure. Uh, you know maybe. You can talk to them, you know, sure. or whatever. Why don't we take this conversation off offline because we can sit here all all night talking about <laughs> yeah. this. Sure. Okay. But I, I can tell you that contracts are, are disclosable. Once contracts are awarded. 
So I want to I want to say this tongue in cheek and with a word of caution that state agencies have to apply the letter of the law. So you need to, to read what that RFP said, what the law says, because a lot of people assume the law says this. You have to actually read it. Because a lot of times the law really says something different than what you think it says. And we run into this, this problem every day. Uh, Jackie runs into it all the time. The law says this and we have to comply to that. And it seem, may seem unfair, but when the laws are written, especially initiatives are written, it's never written, um, uh, written to, the, to benefit everybody. Initiatives are, read, are meant to benefit a certain group. It may seem pretty wide. So I'm in danger of running over political lines here, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So whenever you have a law, you need to really, really read it really well in what it says, because we have to comply to that. As a matter of fact, when something becomes law, we have to defend it, whether or not we believe in it. Okay, so Thank you. just in closing, we have a fraud hotline, uh, fraud hotline, I think, at washout.wad.gov. If there's any instances or circumstances like that you had mentioned, we can discuss later. Um, also, we have a DBE sports services program, and information is here. I'm trying to wrap up somewhat quickly, so uh, we provide technical assistance um, through consultants, free plans and specifications, and manuals to DBEs. And then um, to the small business program will also help companies find where they need to go and things of that nature. So any remaining questions? Okay. Can you mention um, the current stage of the disparity oh, study? Oh, the disparity study. Where is that at? Okay. It's the disparity study is the analysis of the utilization versus the availability and it's the percentage um, of disparity occurring within Washington State. The study is scheduled to be released at the end of December, so they're wrapping up, and I think they've finished all the anecdotal data, so the one-on-one um, -on -one interviews, the availability interviews, the telephone surveys, the things of those nature, and now they're finishing up the quantitative portion, which is all the data analysis, which is um, DOT data, um, some data from OMWBE, some data from Ben and Bradstreet, some financial marketplace relevant data, and then they'll be able to have a new percentage of availability for DBEs in Washington State in December. So we will have a new overall DBE goals within a few months of that. So.